Hey there, fellow painters. Today we're painting the Iron Weld Great Cannon. Before we begin, let's talk about the sub assembly. I've kept the shield, cannon, and characters separate to make our painting process easier and more efficient. Time is precious, after all. Now let's get started with the base. I have chosen Griff Charger Grey, a fantastic color that serves as a perfect foundation for stone textures. What I love about this gray is that it strikes a balance. It's not too light, nor too dark. You can use the paint straight from the pot with little to no thinning required. Moving on to another versatile paint, Garax Sewer. This little gem is incredibly useful especially for creating wood and dirt effects. You can also use it for leather, pouches, hair, and even skin. It's like a one-stop shop for various elements in your painting. I used to rely on wild wood for wood textures, given its name. However, I discovered that it was a tad too dark for my liking. We now have Fenrisian Grey. Now, for this step, I prefer using an airbrush. However, if you don't have one, don't worry. Dry brushing is a great alternative. Next up, we have Fondia Brown, which will apply over the Garrick sewer to enhance the wood texture. At this stage, it kind of starts to resemble realistic wood. Now, I personally prefer using an airbrush for this step. You can achieve similar results with dry brushing. Simply mist the Fondia Brown paint from above onto the model, not too close and not too thick. This will add subtle highlights and shadows, emphasizing the wood grain, remember, the key here is to maintain a gentle misting effect. For those using dry brushing, it's equally effective. Take a super light dry brush and gently sweep it over the wooden areas, focusing on the edges and areas of interest. I use the airbrush once again, this time focusing on areas that would typically accumulate dirt, soil or dust. By applying a light misting from an angle, I can achieve a weathered and worn appearance. If you're dry brushing, you can achieve a similar effect by using a very light touch and focusing on those areas. On to Administratum Grey. For this step, we'll be dry brushing it all over the base, including parts of the mud areas. Additionally, we'll use a light amount of wraith bone to dry brush and highlight the edges of the stone. While it's best to avoid going over the dirt, a little bit of overlap is acceptable. Now, let's move on to XV88. This color works wonders as a dry brush over the wooden areas. Time to make it look like a grey water fastness unit by introducing Avalin Sunset Yellow. Another option is to use Flash Git Yellow, which you may choose to skip. For a Zenithal effect, apply the paint from above, mimicking the way natural light would hit the shield, although it doesn't seem to be visible on camera. In person, you'll notice a subtle change that adds depth and dimension to the shield. Now onto Black Legion Contrast Paint. This paint will be applied to most of the thick metal areas, creating a striking black metal effect that complements the yellow color scheme. Using black instead of silver adds a unique touch and enhances the overall aesthetic of the miniature. Apply the Black Legion contrast paint to the cannon and the trim of the main shield to create that thick black metal appearance. Mm -hmm. 
next administratum grey. We'll use this color to go back over the base, adding a light grey tone to enhance the overall appearance. Additionally, use Wraithbone to dry brush over the stones if you didn't previously. You may also paint the paper scrolls, skulls, and any other areas that are made of cloth, leather, and so on. Vallejo Steel, a high quality steel paint that provides excellent coverage. This shade of steel is chosen to make certain areas pop. I chose steel instead of a darker silver to create a vibrant effect. To add visual interest, apply the steel color to specific areas of the miniature. This will help highlight and differentiate those parts from the rest of the model. Next I use Dwarven Gold. In this case, I have chosen to use it on a gargoyle and other areas. You can also consider using copper or brass for similar effects, depending on your preference. Additionally, We'll use Garak's sewers to paint some of the ground areas that have been sculpted onto the model. Snakebite leather is another great paint to use. Apply it to specific areas, such as clothing or leather parts. At this stage, the pieces should be ready and you can proceed to glue them together and onto the base. Before doing so, make sure the other characters can fit onto the base as well. Prior to gluing, it's a good idea to paint the area where the insignia will be. Typically, this is done by painting it brown and then applying Rakarth flesh over it. I actually forgot to paint it, and we'll go back to it later. Dry fit the characters to determine their placement on the base. Once you're satisfied with the arrangement, use super glue to secure the characters in place. Remove the shield and the cannon from the base to create a nice stand for the characters. This helps when painting them. For the wooden parts and clothing, I use skeleton hoard, applying it to areas such as trousers, shirts, and footwear. Combine various colors from the cannon, such as Black Legion, Garrex sewers, and snakebite leather to paint the clothes. I use Griff Charger gray for denim areas, such as a denim shirt or jeans, as well as Affirmatic Blue for shirts and other clothing pieces.
For the cannon shell and helmet details, I use Necro Gold to add visual interest. Valeo Silver can be used for the metal parts. An Agrak Earthshade can be applied to the entire model to provide a weathered and dirty appearance. For the face, I used Cadian Flesh. To prepare the cannon and shield for the next step, I applied a gloss varnish. Next, I used streaking grime from AK Interactive to go over all the wooden areas, including the yellow parts, black parts, steel, wooden cannon, frame, chassis, ropes, and even the gold. It's important to be careful with this product, as it has a strong smell and can be difficult to wash off brushes and hands with water. Since it's alcohol based, wiping it off with alcohol is necessary. While the pieces are drying, I returned to the two characters and added some highlights. I used yellow to help them match the grey water fastness army color scheme, which is predominantly yellow. For the leather areas, I used Baylor Brown as a strong highlight to brighten up the model, which has a dark and gritty appearance. If you feel the highlight is too bright, you can go over it again with snakebite leather to dull it down without completely changing it. This way, the added highlights will still be visible. The camera may make it appear quite yellow, but Baylor Brown is a great paint to use for non-metallic metal. I applied a few coats of this thin paint, building up the color gradually. For the grey areas, such as the shirts and trousers, I used gauze blaster paint, which is thin and requires multiple layers. To highlight the steel parts, I used Vallejo Silver. I selectively applied it to certain areas, adding scratches and emphasizing the parts that catch the light. 
For edge highlighting the bottle, I used Sybarite Green. Once these parts were dry, I used alcohol and a cotton bud to wipe off any excess and keep the grime in the recesses. It's important to note that this product has a strong smell and can make your fingers sticky and messy. So be cautious and avoid touching anything afterwards. Wearing gloves is also a good idea. Now that the model has reached this stage, I added some texture paint for the snow and grass tufts. You can use any brand you prefer. For the grass, I chose a color that is not too vibrant as I wanted a wintry vibe. In the past, working with snow texture paint was intimidating as there was a fear of ruining the model. However, I've learned to approach it realistically considering that when snow falls, it can accumulate on the model. This allows for experimenting and achieving realistic effects. The snow can settle in the recesses or land on the top areas, including the cannon itself. It's important not to go overboard and cover 90% of the model with snow, as it can give the impression of a blizzard. Additionally, when the texture paint on your brush becomes thin, you can use it as a glaze to add an icy layer. This is quite useful if you want to keep the snow elements subtle without making them too thick. 